paper magic will survive like the heat death of the universe and will... <laughs> oh, it's a smuggler's copter. Would you like to crew this? And then it crashes because they don't understand arithmetic. All your cards belong to me. Two minutes into Mason him in the eyeballs, I switched to pepper spray. He's like, yeah, it's downright refreshing. And went back to the race. Magic is dying. I'm done. He's selling everything. <laughs> I might be a hoarder. And yes. I don't have the crayons or glue to explain this to you right now. <laughs> Were you going to die twice? Oil Just... would be worthless before magic cards would. Well, okay, Dr. Man. That's Mr. <laughs> Dr. Professor Jason. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brainstorm Brewery. I'm Corbin Hostler. A little muted uh, this week, you might notice. I'm getting over being sick. Joined, as always, by my co-hosts, Jason and DJ. And for the two of you, I know you're excited about Infinity. That's not my question. I know you're I'm both very in, hyped. Corbin. I'm that excited. You're very hyped for it. Okay, I understand that. So what I'm curious, my question for you all is, did you know that you your memes can now be dreams and your dreams can now come true thanks to infinity there is a card called blank goblin and you have to put a sticker in front of it so you can put a mind sticker on it you can put a mind sticker in front of it and then do you know what you get mind goblin you get a mind goblin now, if anyone at home doesn't know what a mind goblin is, I suggest you ask your friends. And with that, everybody, welcome to Brainstorm Brewery. We're glad ask to be with your, you this ask week. Ask your friends who are 13 and up. This is, this is a not yeah. a need for everyone's podcast. <laughs> there are some 12-year-olds in the if car you... whose parents are listening to this podcast. Well, the 12-year-old gets it. I guarantee you that. Yeah. is that 12-year-old, like, 22 now? Didn't what? you reach out to us? There was like a we did have there was, was somebody there an inappropriately who, young kid that yeah. listened to the cast and he's like it's we, cool. we had I'm this in high talk. school now. Yeah, we had this talk about how, you know, we a long time about how we what should we be fam, family friendly, we'll never curse, blah blah whatever, all these different things. And we're like, no kids listen to this anyway. And then yeah, a uh, listener emailed us and was like, I used to listen to you all in middle school. That's <laughs> unsettling. <laughs> Yeah. Can you imagine oh. being like PewDiePie and just having that like that like god of death hanging over your shoulders, knowing that you're responsible for ruining that many lives? Well, it could be, I mean if you like Andrew Tate style. Yeah. Uh I it seems rough. I, I think, I think if it's we had bad PewDiePie's enough. PewDiePie's reach, I might not make so many Hitler did nothing wrong speeches. Yeah, it does seem to be a um it seems to be, you think it's it's one of those potholes you think that should be easy to dodge, but none of them do. I think he didn't want to make content anymore. Or I, he didn't want to make contact for, like, lefties. He wanted to start pandering to the alt-right. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's so easy to just get new fans overnight. Like, you lose all your old fans, but you get a bunch of new ones. Yeah. What, DJ? Is, is a pothole, what's a pothole? Is that, like, a light pole? No. He said a, a light big pole, obvious thing is a light pole you run into, a pothole you trip in. Okay. Okay. Very different. Understood. Mm -hmm. Ninja Turtles video games made me think falling in a open manhole, manhole happened mm -hmm. a lot and it was trivial. It didn't even damage your health. It's true. You just popped right back up. It a was no big fact. It was, says, who put out yeah. the lights? And then you jump out of the sewer. Well, it's how you hid from some of the bosses, right? You could avoid some of the damage by popping into the pot to the manhole. Turtles and Are time, turtles baby? allowed to go in manholes? They're not man and <coughs> also giant mutated turtle holes. Turtle. Sure, they're not called turtle holes, and maybe they should be. Maybe they should be. This is a know. Ninja Turtles podcast. I bought the Cowabunga collection, and uh, my wife <laughs> Look, was asking me, why does the music keep stopping and then restarting a second earlier? And I'm like, if you're implying that there's some way to go back three seconds with a button on the controller because I took damage from the boss... And I want to try and do oh, that you cheat her. better. You cheat if you're her. implying that uh, is what's happening to the music, I, I don't know what to tell you. Look, I don't <laughs> have time to get good at video games from my childhood. It took me three years to get good at Ninja Turtles 2 for the Game Boy, and I still never beat it. I don't have time to get good at Ninja Turtles 2. I just want to beat it. I'm That's an adult. How, how I got man. money, and I got the ZL controller button. <laughs> that they makes got you go game back shark. in time five Got your seconds. Game Shark, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I never. I had a Game Shark or a Game Genie. You did a I Game, game Genie? Genie for the Game Boy. Oh, and I had a. I had a, a game. So I grew up, and I, this is, might be interesting since we're all a couple of years apart here. But I, I grew up 
in the era of, um, you know, you have one friend who might have a game shark. You know, and it was an N64 game shark, and it was... They made N64 game sharks? You, it was how you could get the unlocked characters on GoldenEye that well, were like, in the, the, the worst game's part code, about it, but not in the game. The worst oh. part about it was you could, like, only get that game shark half the time, because that kid's parents were always divorced. It was so annoying. It, I'm trying to remember. Yep, I'm pretty sure there was a divorce from the kid who had a game shark. Yep, and I went over there. And... All of that aside, um, it's a weird week in magic now i i won't lie i've spent most of it in bed with the flu um but from what i understand oh been... wow so it's not just me corbin's in bed with uh with the flu who's flu corbin yeah, who's the F-O-L- flu? F-L-O-O. Who's, yeah is it the flu is uh sh- i think um, her her name is pronounced flow from the progressive flow? commercials <laughs> mm, mm. does it cheating on your wife with flow how progressive of you what if does anyone wait 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 does anyone remember like the pink haired uh car insurance like yeah cartoon that air insurance or whatever hot? from e-surance <laughs> was it e-surance yeah, yeah. I, it was like air insurance or something like that i don't know type in pink hair rule 34 <laughs> you know i had a marketing class in college and this has always stuck with me it made me so mad the professor gave us very little direction he said come up with a marketing campaign for like this thing or whatever right and my team came up with some kind of in the vein of all these things we're talking about, right? Uh, like silly character or whatever. And this comes through. This is why you need, you know. And um, I got, we got skewered in front of the class by the professor. Oh no! Wait, what? He why? Hated it. He hated What'd you it. do? We weren't. We didn't match the serious tone that he wanted. And I'm like, e trade or whatever. What about the <laughs> babies, bro? What about the? F- babies on yeah. the tv are you kidding me yeah. like everyone knows that these somber and serious super bowl commercials are always are the you best fucking ones like, no one likes me, the budweiser frog we want the one from the insurance company about how your kid's gonna die on 9-11 or whatever yeah dude it was it was just like i was like I, and he like you just teed off on us and i'm like look man it's one thing if you want to talk about this but like the scope of the assignment was open-ended <laughs> like what <laughs> Yeah, nobody remembers the baby peanut for Mr. Peanut. Like, I want to know like, what that guy's origin story. There was clearly some like cartoonish thing he pitched to an ad agency, and well, they thought it was so bad ad, that yeah. they fired yeah. him and burned down his house. <laughs> Look, he he was a great professor. Honestly, I like the guy a lot. And he had like a Breaking Bad heel turn. He, like, he, but but like yeah. that day, man, he did he came not home and his like wife our... was in bed with the Triad guys guy, and yeah, he was dude, like, like it's like a marketing one hundred one. It was like a marketing one hundred one class, and he's like, I'm gonna make these kids look bad in front of their class because they had a funny idea for a commercial <laughs> okay, man. you're an associate professor at a school in oklahoma <laughs> look i'm not um stop uh, acting that person... like you're fucking don draper bro <laughs> it's like the ap bio like <laughs> pitch <laughs> we need a serious tone my mother was a prostitute and she used to give me hershey bars wow okay <laughs> Maybe marketing shouldn't be that serious. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's a, that was um, a, a learning experience for me. And now, and, that, well, and, and then, now, like, no, no, no. Yeah. Wait, wait. I, I have a fun fact. Like, the uh-huh. coolest part about that entire story is that professor uh, works for Wizards now, and he was the one that came <laughs> up with the the content creator, the cosplayer prize, the cosplay rewards. Yes, brilliant yes. marketing the gift scheme. The he gift trended cards. hard. Mm-hmm. It did work. Listen, there are only two companies have done that. They're the people that made the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and fixed his human teeth, and there's Wizards. No other company has taken feedback like that and been like, we're sorry. Do you see Chick-fil-A opening on Sundays and serving gay people? You don't. Because companies don't listen. But Wizards listened. We made fun of them. A we lot. Did. We did. And they read Bullying those tweets. Works. And they're like, man, if I don't work at this company, I'd laugh at these. But these are hurting my feelings. And then they're like, oh, we're sorry. Did we say $200 Joanne Fabrics gift card? We meant $3,000 cash. So <laughs> and you know what? the gift card. And, and, and in multiple Bullying divisions, Bullying people too. into so doing they, the right thing is possible. Yeah. Well, the, the sad part of it is it's not like they were like, okay, we'll increase it a little bit. They increased the prizes drastically across the board for all the different levels of competition they have. So... Mm-hmm. Basically, when they got a little bit of when they got memed on on Twitter for a few days, they came up with 10, 10 grand or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like spoilers, people. 
The ten grand was always there. Like <laughs> it was going to go to pastimes. The ten grand. But it's just like what? What? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just one of those things with wizards, and it's just like at the heart of it, there's probably a real person who organized this and thought it would be a great idea to put prizes instead of just a. Because think about how often and literally the years that wizards took advantage of cosplayers doing stuff for free. I mean, there were times back in old Vegas is where I would be taking photos of, of Christine Sprinkle doing cosplay um, and wizards would use it in all their marketing materials. And I had no idea that the cosplayers weren't compensated to be there in any way at all. Yeah. And they're being used in all this official. They weren't even getting... It was disgusting. Well, Christine Sprinkle kind of made a big deal of that. She's like that iconic welcome to Vegas yeah, exactly. Avison shoot. I I didn't get a plane ticket. I didn't get. And they were they it's gave cos, they gave cosplayers what they were giving judges, which you know is still no, kind of fucked yeah. too. But like so so it was so so flash flash forward to this. You know, look, there's probably a real person in Wizards who who put together this cosplay competition idea and thought it was a really cool thing, and they have community. All of that's great, right? And they're like, can but, I have a budget? To, and, no. and they're like, yeah, you can no. have a five hundred dollar budget. Yeah, and it's just so. Yeah, it's so rough for that person because then they see the thing they put their hard work into just get shit on online, but it got shit on online for a good reason. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's one of those things where it's rough because it, bullying works is kind of the takeaway that at least Magic Twitter is going to take away from that. Uh, and you see it all the time. Uh, but, but like, it's not really bullying. It is just like... It's holding people accountable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I was quoting what Jason said there is to, to meme it, right? But yes, I mean, yeah. there's there's obviously a, a line here. Um, so in in RuneScape, uh, the RuneScape world, uh, one of the most. Do we drink incidents, every time DJ brings up RuneScape? It's the first time this cast, Jason. You're gonna. I got now. water. Okay. Uh, it was. It, I, I want to bring this up because there are companies that do listen to feedback, and yeah, it's it's usually because you hold them their feet to the fire. And people talk all the time about, like, they, there's a lot of people that want to sound smart on Twitter. They're like, well, if you want to hold their feet to the fire, you have to vote with their, your wallet, pinky out, T-sip. And, like, that 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 could work in the long term. Unless it's wanna, RuneScape, like, a game look, that it, no one's played since 1998. If you, if you want, everyone knows that if you really want to make an impact with Wizards, you buy a ticket to Magic 30, you sign up for every event, you buy as much as you can, and then when you're there, you go find a Wizards employee who's not involved with the planning to give feedback to. But that way, since you spent money, they know to value your opinion. Yeah. So, I uh, voted with my dollar. There, there was basically a guy who spent roughly 2,000 hours of his own life creating an HD version of the game. So he went oh. through every single area in the world, in the entire MMO, and, like, textured the entire HD area. He worked with Jagex. He worked with the company that makes the game. He's like, is this cool? Is this cool? Yep, okay, we're great. Following all the rules, sharing my code, my API, all this stuff. And then at the 11th hour, they, like, pulled the rug out from under him, and they said, no, we're not going to release this because one day we might do our own. That's a real thing for corporations. And, Did he get uh, paid? That I mean, look at Dota and League of Legends. He did not get paid, but the the community canceled enough subscriptions immediately and made enough of a like they trended on r slash all for like three days. Nice. And, uh, they, what was they the outcome? It, they I mean they got it reversed and they they managed to work with him and the I, it wasn't any of like the moderators' fault. It was the the co- giant corporate shadow puppet yeah. that like yeah. told somebody to do the thing. But oh, we could do that someday. Screw that so guy, they so like, we can't yeah so I was gonna say that's what happened with with Dota on the original platform is that it was a whole legal fight back in the day because the original Dota was a, a custom map on Warcraft three which was of course owned by Blizzard so yeah. it caused a massive massive um, fight and legal battle over who owned Dota and in the end that's why Dota ended up with Valve as its own thing. Um, and Blizzard had to make Heroes of the Storm instead. God, remember Heroes of the Storm? Yeah, they officially discontinued uh, support like for 2017 it. 2017 or 2018, wasn't it? I didn't yeah, like not, it, not but why didn't I like it? It was entirely team-based experience, so what you did individually didn't matter. Yeah, so like unless somebody playing, in bot lane yeah. could level up and just your, your top laner would level up and just smash your face in. And there wasn't a lot of like skill outplay stuff in the game. It really was just kind of like jam people at objectives. It just wasn't a very good MOBA because uh, they were three or four years behind yeah. because they got they were relying on 
other people in the community to do their work for them. And then they just tried to claim ownership of Dota. And that didn't work. So yeah, interesting stuff there. Interesting stuff. Um, Can you all right, tell well, there's not a bunch of magic news this week? We are filibustering <laughs> ourselves hard. Well, I mean, if, unless we want to go infinitely deep Listen, you don't care infinity. about Magic the Gathering. You, by now, if you're still listening to this cast, you care about us and our opinions. Corbin just said infinitely deep into infinity instead of infinitely deep. I'm sick, man. You got to cut me a break. It's been a rough, it's been a rough weekend. What's your excuse for the other 10 years of the podcast? <laughs> the other 10 years of the podcast, I'm super clever on. You look like you need a nap, Jason. Don't you worry, man. If anyone can send me a clip of Corbin being clever on this podcast, I'll send you a prize. <laughs> Are you going to send them a, a a prize that will help them help them take a nap? That's an awkward pitch, DJ. Corbin said oh you look God. like you should take a nap, this and idiot. then you just fucking skipped it. This so damn idiot. Because because he, I always say that that, that makes me want to take a nap. And I thought he was referencing that. It was both. It was both. Thank you, DJ. Oh, I'm sick. Ooh. I think Are you implying a... that you did something clever? I am kind of thinking I did something clever there. Yes. I'm... Should I send you a prize? <sighs> no, don't. I'm going to be the... I think I'm shifting sides here. Oh, man. For this we better move on. Alone, alone. Yeah, we better we better move on before things turn get completely flipped up. I know down what to send here. you, Corbin. I know what to send you. Is it a breaking bulk pick? It's not a breaking bulk pick. It's even better. It's a revolutionary product. I'm drinking a fantastic beer tonight from the Platform Beer Company. It's their Oktoberfest beer uh, from Ohio. It was sent to me by Wesley Raz, who is the chief sleep officer, um, the CSO at a company called Snooze. No other company has the balls to have a chief sleep officer. That's I applied awesome. for that position at EDH Rec, and they're like, we don't need a sleep officer. Besides, that would be Corbin, because he was an hour late to a meeting one time because he fell asleep putting his kid to bed. Uh, if you're not like Corbin and you don't have undiagnosed narcolepsy because you refuse to go get a sleep, uh, a sleep test and get a CPAP. Sleep study done next month, buddy. Okay. Fantastic. I don't know why you whispered it to... It looks like you whispered it to DJ from my perspective. Stop talking, fellas. Uh, if you're like me, you could use a little bit of help going to sleep. And that's why Wesley from the Snooze Corporation sent me two cases of snooze which is a, a delicious sleep drink and uh a it apparently sleep, is all natural and it, and it has okay so like a you sleep know what drink it, yeah it's like an energy drink but the opposite you drink it 15 minutes before bedtime and uh, i had some last night it's fantastic thank god i don't have to chug nyquil anymore yeah well you still should no, because you sh no you don't chug the nyquil you put it on your chicken <laughs> everyone knows that Everybody knows that dextromethorphan is metabolized by your liver and uh, will turn into uh, DMT. I actually don't know what dextromethorphan is. I think it's probably a cousin of methamphetamine. No one knows but what you're talking no about. There's no methamphetamine in snooze. It's all natural. It's plant-based and it enhances your sleep. The proprietary recipe of snooze is formulated with a combination of sleep-inducing herbs, valerian, passion flower, linden flower, and lemon balm. And those support your circadian rhythm and help you achieve restorative regenerative and, ever, and revitalizing it, rest and if you ever take a trip to westeros i assume you're set did i hear that there's valerian in it valerian not steel? valerian valerian oh it's i get valerian it, yeah. not valerian yeah Corbin, okay that makes sense idiot. i'm changing sides again that's i understand thanks you i'm against myself on this one thank you for clearing that up i was a fool it doesn't have any side effects or habituation which if you take if you take like ambient or stuff like that you're not going to make any racist tweets on snooze like you would on Ambien. You're not going to get canceled like Roseanne Barr. Um, you're not going to sleepwalk and skinny dip in your neighbor's pool. Uh, you're just going to have high quality, restorative, regenerative, and revitalizing rest naturally. Okay? No side What's effects. What's it taste like? What's it taste like? Uh, well, uh, I was going to read the ad copy, but I guess I will sample some now. Uh, I had That's some fine. last night. It's pretty good. It tastes like iced tea, basically. All right, good for you. Because it's it's cool. brewed with natural herbs. It doesn't have a chemically taste. And it, it uh -huh. doesn't even have a chemically taste like the iced teas you buy. This just tastes like sleep iced tea. It's it's fine. It's very good. Send me some sleep in a can, please. I will uh, 
I'll take some of that. It's got for that. Sure. It's got a little bit of a, a lemon balm taste to it. I get that. Yeah. So over at Snooze, they are committed to healthier sleep to impact productivity, elevate performance, and improve the overall quality of the life of their customers. This is for all you gamers out there looking for that competitive edge. Sleep is the foundation <laughs> for better overall health, including memory, mental focus, and energy. Why did I read that? Because, in addition to sending me two cases of Snooze, thanks for that, Wes, he sent me some beer. That's it. I said I would do a 90-second ad read for your product on the podcast if you sent me a beer. So far, mostly people with YouTube channels and my friends have sent me some beer, and I thank you for that. But, uh, hey, if any company makes a product that, like, I'm not immediately opposed to on a, a moral level, <laughs> send me a beer. I'll shout out the podcast. You get your shout out, yeah. All right. Snooze well, is, it's, uh, it, it's tasty. I'm going to finish the rest of this can, actually. If, do you like iced tea? <laughs> then drink an iced tea that will make you sleep better. I'm just picturing like a gamer fridge and on the left side is like, it's got like a divider in it. Yes, the center. Yes, yes. And the left side is G fuel and the right side is snooze. There's, those are your two like inside you can make of the there, opposite of a four loco. You mix that with <laughs> alcohol, call it a booze and snooze. See if you can drink a can of that with some booze in it without shitting your pants. Gatorade sounds like will a Sterling be making, Archer cocktail. <laughs> Gatorade will be making this thing before too long for sure. This is, I mean, this is probably the next need better sleep gamers. That's a real thing. The snooze might be it. All right. Well, uh, at GP also, if you're at a GP, you're, you, you don't really get restful sleep when you're somewhere else. You know, if you're not in your own bed, if you're in unfamiliar surroundings, you actually sleep lighter I because it's as a well human being, yep. if you don't, if you're in an unfamiliar place, you will, yep. it's easier to wake you up. And in a hotel, there's all kinds of sounds, you know, yep. like my wife and I celebrating our anniversary by having a, a pillow fight. <laughs> Jason, do you, DJ, do you have a hard time sleeping or getting up at events when you're working? I have a hard time falling asleep in general. I'm not quite a, like an insomniac, but whatever like the tier below that is, where it just naturally takes me 30 minutes to an hour to fall asleep, and then hotels are usually like two hours. That's rough, yeah. Um, so I actually like sleeping in hotels. I because, love hotel beds. They're so comfy, yeah. but I can never fall asleep in them. Then so I have a problem. A, my, a my, problems are, my problems are not waking up in the morning. Um particularly alert so i actually like the whole i i, I can wake up at 7 a.m uh, when i'm working an event out of a hotel bed and be ready to roll out of bed why isn't your wife kidney punching you for having a shittier bed that is less good than a hotel bed when you have a twenty thousand dollar sorting machine <laughs> wait what when did i say my bed was bad well you said hotel beds are so comfy implying that if you had a comfortable bed you'd be like hotel beds are almost as good as my bed I have a, I have a sleep, I have the most deluxe version of the sleep number bed, the independent, uh, I can raise my head and feet independent of what my wife is doing. It's like two twin beds next to each other. That's, that's kind of like number we got. Well, Melissa, that's kind of like it's my bed, except life. we don't, we don't have all of the legs for it. So one side just leans down a lot. So it's like kind of, we, we also have different levels on our bed. That's a well, slant I, number bed. That's different. The reason I didn't talk about my bed is because I sleep on a. Because we're not sponsored by sleep number. So once once decides to sponsor us, then I'll talk about my amazing, awesome bed. But until they give us money, yeah. have you have you emailed them? I have actually. <laughs> I have emailed and JJ can bleep this part out. I have emailed Purple like four times and tried to be a sleep ambassador. I love how Purple like a uses a giant CEO. industrial roller to smash the mattress down as flat as possible. And roll it up and jam it into a cardboard box this big, and it shows up at your house. They're like, "If you're not satisfied with the mattress, send it back." <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like looking at the box, like, "We're gonna need some more tape." <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We actually, All we right. actually really liked ours. But again, I can't, t I can't tell you who, who uh, provided yeah. me. I'm with not gonna say who, bed. but the color of the mattress is purple. It's a purple mattress made by a company that makes beds. That should sponsor this podcast like our generous sponsor, MTG Stocks, which is where we go for all the best magic finance information, which is how we bring you the best picks of the week and breaking bulk. You know what won't make you fall asleep? Finance. Money. Just that Wolf of Finan Wall Street. MTG Finance. You know, the most exciting rush. Yeah. part of the game. Like, you, yep. you just like fall, you're trying to fall asleep and you got those numbers flying through your head. Like it's, and just like decisions and movements. Yeah, like man. Gambit on the ceiling. Exactly. Like you're, you're thinking about all that Skrilla you could be rolling in. 
And MCG stocks just helps you get through those those cold long nights, you know, when you're decided I, to do a 24 hour run and just buy out all the cards on TCG Player. Like you just have all that info at your at your disposal. Look, I'm at not going to say that I've never sat in bed at night and looked at the interest page on MDG stocks. I find that's a pretty like, relaxing there's just way so much to, data to get up to in the take morning. In, and it's it's just hard to you can't fall asleep no, not knowing that data, right? Not having looked at it and absorbed it into your gigantic brain. Like you gotta. <laughs> You gotta, right. you gotta did have you know, it all. It's like a Thanos glove. Did you know it's actually those data, not that data? I did not know that, data, Jason. Get out of here. The singular of data is datum. I knew that. One I... datum. Breaking bolt time. Breaking bolt time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. All right, I've, I've, got, uh, I've got That's a breaking true. bulk for it's literally you. True. Okay, uh, wait, wait, wait. Before we do breaking bulk, I have another thing to ruin for everybody. I think I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Uh, Corbin, you know the, the the blue mythic from Modern Horizons? This isn't my breaking bulk, but like the blue mythic from Modern Horizons, the creature, uh, Urza. You, do you know what the name of that card is? Lord High Artificer? Yep. Urza Lord High Artificer. That is the correct pronunciation for that card. It's not Artificer. It's Artificer. Nor is it art- Artificer or Artificer. But but the word is Artifice. It's not Artifice. Yep. So figure that one out. Thanks, English Fig- language. <laughs> figure it out. Also, I'll see if you two can figure this one out. I have a colorless uncommon that's worth money from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Uh, is it the... the-, uh, the, the- the, the discard constructed. One? Jason and I are thinking of the same card. The, the one construct? that discards cards. Or when you discard um, cards. There's you two the constructs that are uncommon and worth money. It's, it's the one that when you discard no, cards. DJ, you, you pick one, I'll something. pick the other one. Okay. Pick, is that... I said the one I'm picking. I don't know the name of the card. I, I, I think DJ is referring to containment construct. Jason, yes. what are you referring to? Containment construct. Okay, I mean the well, other one. Okay, well, you're both wrong. The answer is secluded courtyard. It... It's a land. Oh, it's not the reliquary thing? Because I was gonna, if it, I knew it was a land, I would have said the reliquary thing. Nope. Also, was was this picked know, recently? Uh, yeah, roadside reliquary is not it. Was was this picked recently? I can't remember the last time I flipped somebody the bird. <sighs> it's been a long time since I did that. Vulgar. Oh, I did it here. last week driving down the road because there was like a, a street preacher out on the corner of John Glenn and Fifty Seven. For all those people who know where I live, but uh, which is a surprising <laughs> number of you, it's really creepy, but. Uh, um, yeah, there was a street preacher on that corner and I just kind of just rolled down my window. It was like seven in the morning and I was like, I'm not, I'm not about this. You're, you're getting the, the drive by finger. Brainstorm Brewery's professional doxer DJ says it's creepy that people might know where he lives. Corbin, is that true? That you're a professional doxer? I don't know if you get paid. I mean, <laughs> what, what do you, would, uh, would somebody who lives at say that to me <laughs> dj dj do you understand yeah. that you just doxed a nice young couple who bought my house from me my <laughs> old house <laughs> you just doxed them out of some nice like 22 year olds who bought my old home <laughs> an oklahoma city couple was found to turn completely inside out and written on the wall in their blood was here's my pick of the week you oh, that's amazing. Fuck. Wow, sorry to them. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> Why won't you let me play EDH on Wednesdays? <laughs> Wait, who said that? Whoever Corbin? killed those people looking for Corbin. Oh, all right. How about... Uh, it's, th- that's one pick of the week from DJ, I guess. Uh, DJ, do you have any other picks of the week you might want to... An ice pick. <laughs> no a killer so, used an ice no pick. No evidence. Every time I pick a card be- that was printed before 2018. Wait, wait, Corbin wait, wait, stroke. DJ, DJ. What? Wait. Corbin, do you think an ice pick is a pick made out of ice and that's why you said no evidence? <laughs> I think it's a plot of a um CSI Do you episode. think an ice pick is called an ice pick because it's a pick made out of ice? <laughs> and it'll melt? <laughs> I'm telling you that there is a plot of one of those old murder shows where somebody killed somebody with an icicle and it melted and there was no evidence. Yeah, they an brought it in pick. a thermos. That's... An ice pick, if you will. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what else is a nice pick is my pick of the week. You sure, buddy. 
I, all right, so every time I'm sure I it will a, be when we get to pick of the week. It is, however, time for Breaking Bowl. Shut the Every time man. I pick a card from before 2018, Corbin's like, that's Urza's Bottle. mattress, right? And then I'm, we're all like, no, <sighs> time for bed, Grandpa. So Urza's mattress pick, is an infinity card. I'm going to pick a card from Throne of Eldraine, which is a set Ooh. that Corbin should know. Okay. It's no, a that blue just came common. out this year, right? It's a blue common from, from yes, from 2022, from Throne of Eldraine. A blue common? Correct. Not like a, a land that makes blue mana? So not Mystic Sanctuary? That's uncommon. I, if, that would have been colorless, Corbin, and that would have been... It's a common, Jason. It is That's actually a common? A common. It, was, it yeah. was banned in Popper very quickly, yeah. Yeah, it's a common. Um, okay, let me think. Uh, Merfolk Secret Keeper. It is close to that. It's a fairy, right? I'm trying to figure out what would be close to that, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think what... So Eldraine blue cards had... Is it the Overwhelmed Apprentice? Nope. You were so close. With the Secret Keeper? Yeah. So close. So it's a Merfolk? It or is a Merfolk. Mills. Oh, it's a Merfolk. Okay. I was thinking that you meant like if it was a mill card. It oh. is a mill card. <laughs> and it's not a fairy. It's a Merfolk. It's the showcase version of Merfolk Secret Keeper Corbin. Oh, oh, God. The God normal one is him. not worth crap. Jesus Christ. The showcase one is very listable, which I pick them out and I list them for a dollar. And uh, it's it's also Merfolk Secret Keeper slash Venture Deeper, which is the name of its adventure. Mm-hmm. So that's dirty. pick the showcase one out. Mm-hmm. If you if you spend I don't know sixty five hours of your entire life picking out normal Merfolk Secret Keepers, then Corbin took that away from you. I'm so sorry. Uh, you should just be picking the normal the the showcase ones, <laughs> not the normal ones. Uh, yeah, this is just a blue zero four that it's, it's a mill card. You pay one and then they mill some cards or you mill some cards. So, yeah. So, so specifically this deck or this card has a, a home in like dredge vines lists in modern, uh, because it can, it can mill you. And then obviously it can mill your venge vines and then you can then cast it as a one drop to get those venge vines back. It, it fits really, really well into decks, um, that kind of do that solely that sort of thing. Cool. All right, Jason, what do you got? Um, there's a card from Crimson Vow that is a red card. Is this, uh, is this the discard a card, make two treasures, draw two cards? No. Big score? Uh, is this like exile the top two cards of your library, you may play them in next turn? No. Card? It's a it red uncommon, a, you said, I'm sorry? It is a common red creature. Yeah, we are on we, we actually have some good good hard guesses this week. A common red creature, huh? Creature. Creature. I got nothing. I thought I had it with my two guesses. I was I was confident, but if it's a creature, I don't think I have um, that in my mental database. Crimson Vow, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm F F six. That set was terrible. That set was terrible, man. What is it? What, J- Jason? Do we oh, lose no. Jason? Oh shit, Jason! He oh, pulled a Dude. Ryan. I think he was the fucking snooze. He fell asleep. It was the snooze. Oh my god! He... The secret of the snooze. How do, how do we wake him up? Let's wake. Let's play. Let's play this like a. What's something? Audience what Jason? Episode. Something can't say no to. Like what's a smelling salt for Jason? I think of something terrible that old people like. I cast farewell and choose enchantment. <laughs> how is about that... uh? No, you cast board. Uh, to say wrath of God is good for webcam commander. Uh, or maybe, I don't know. What music does this dude like? He's like, what, six, 50 or 60? So, like, maybe... I mean, he's up there. Like... It's like been... Bruce Springsteen or One something? One week since you looked... Oh, oh, there we go. Shit, we did it. 
It's what been happened? one week, buddy. You've you've been asleep for a week, man. The Holy snooze shit, got that's you, dude. News really. You gotta be careful really with works. that snooze, bro. I was getting really restful sleep. I was having a lucid dream. Uh huh. Uh huh. What was going on in your lucid dream, Jason? I was the next try guy. <laughs> they do. They are looking for a replacement. Yeah. Well, so is his wife. So I. I... <laughs> Uh, Kessig Flamebreaker from Mr. Hot Crimson Vow is not quite expensive yet, but I'm noticing it's selling out of smaller retail sites than a TCG Player. And I think soon the price is going to have to be impacted on TCG Player because they're running out of other sites for it to be sold. It started going up around 8.15, so I'm thinking the <coughs> spike is going to be caused by PM, like an hour the spoiler. Ago? What? 8.15 p.m.? Yeah, dude. And not August 15th. Definitely at 15 p.m. Well, if it was, I mean, look, it's not like cards don't sometimes spike at 8.15 p.m. And then we talk about them on this podcast. That and people will, go to, people will go to patreon.com slash BSB and get access to the spreadsheet. See that as soon as we make those picks. And they get early access to the episode where they get to hear the reasoning behind those picks. So Kessig Flame Breather is just another one of these. If you have it in play, your combo of recasting a bobble or whatever becomes inf infinite damage. Yep, and plus, like, uh, the, the foil started wildly diverging from the non-foil, and that's sold out most places. There's somebody with a brick of them on TCG Player, but, like, that's that's about it. Once you get through that brick, like, it's a couple of copies here and there. And w there is a lot of precedent for foils of cards like that. Spear Spewer, which is a year older than mm -hmm. Kessick Flame, Bre or two years or three years older. Two or three, Spear yeah. Spewer, two which is three. from Ravnica Allegiance, which came out at some point in the past. Um, 2019 2019 so it's two years older than Kessick flame breather um spear spewers did the same thing like all the all the kind of stuff that like kind of pings like stuff. that they're making yeah. a ton of pingy commanders torwaki abaddon thermo alchemist foils are in play but that was kind of already a, a thing but that's mm -hmm. that's another recent card thermo alchemist was what crimson vow or the so this one? is all about we got ping Eldritch tribal moon so we got ping moon. tribal now right originally that's a thing. Yeah. Well, basically, so, we have multiple pinger tribal decks. Cause, yeah. Because Abaddon says you draw if they lost a bunch of life. And um, uh, like Torwaki says, if something deals one damage, you deal three. So Spear Spewer, uh, you know, Thermal Alchemist being able to untap, that's cool. Um, you know, all the stuff that kind of pings. That What's that card that Corbin misplayed with? Firebrand Archer? Yeah. That's uh, not the one I misplayed with, but uh, go on. Okay, Wait, what, what is that was Mercenalist Mercil Javanir, is what you're thinking. Oh, of. the Javanir. Okay, I got the right block. All that kind of what? stuff, especially the foils, are kind of. Did I miss something? Because of some of this stuff. I top aided the dream, the first Dreamhack 10K DJ, and oh, I never, that's right. Never drafted Almond Cat before; it was brand new, and I I qualified for day two, and then I did well on day two. I made top eight. Blah blah blah. I did top eight draft. I had a black red deck. I didn't know. Shit. Oh, black red. I misread a merciless chevalier. Missed lethal. The end. I forgot about that. <laughs> Lost. That Lost in the top eight. It was uh, two years ago, three years ago, probably. Yeah. He bricked in a top eight. How could I forget that? I mean, Almond Cat came out in 2017, so you do the math there, bud. There you go. Yeah, it's been a minute. Must have been. Nobody knows. Almond yeah. Cat came out in 2017. <laughs> Rough. So, Pinger Tribal. That's that's interesting. I think because like, there's like um, some that I remember from from Magic is um, Cunning Spark Mage, the Hasty one from World Wake back in the day. That was a big player when I got into Magic. Um, there's also the like Unearth one from Alara Block. Just thinking yeah. about other cards that might be impacted by the um, sort of the foil, not foil. Like the the foil Cunning Spark Mage is a dollar fifty. Um, so it's something to look at if you're well, I mean, you gotta go look Vithian at oil, stingers, older the foils, one. anything pre, um, uh, collector booster, I would think. Yeah. So collector boosters made foils completely trash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're somebody at home into this pinger tribal, which is kind of a new, new thing, Vithian stinger from a Lara block, uh, has unearth as a pinger, which is pretty yeah. neat. And those are still super cheap foils if you if don't you like foils Kessick flame breather comes in the um the all black uh double feature version also <laughs> oh gosh the uh completely unreadable one those are yeah. so i mean bad. <laughs> they're funny 
Uh, well, speaking of funny, I mean, uh, Infinity exists, as does Warhammer 40k. We've seen but all the these double cards. feature foil is a five dollar foil already, you know, because they don't exist because nobody opened to... it, correct? Yeah, the, sure. The I, I got my probably not yeah. great. I got my Tovalar from that, and it was like fifty dollars, and now they're like thirty because people actually listed some, but there's not very many of uh, the double feature stuff because it sucked, it's and trash. was delayed, it was trash, and it was delayed. Yeah, all of the. If you want to misrepresent something as a swamp, that's a good set. If you want people to think uh, you don't have any islands out. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but I mean, Infinity and Warhammer. We're not going to do set reviews around here because by the time you hear a set review, the previews for the next set will have started. When do Brothers War previews start, Jason? All they've already started. Okay, perfect. Yep. They've put Brothers Wars (laughs) cards into Infinity packs. What are you? Uh, what's your impression on Infinity Warhammer? Just sort of the latest round of supplemental Magic products. Well, is there anything we should care about? Take away from this? Well, because the Infinity cards are not legal in EDH, you don't really need to care about them. Oh well, yeah, some of them are though. Mm. Some of them oh, are legal. Oh in... yeah. Wait, what? Oh, did oh, you know? Oh God! That, did you know that uh, attraction decks are now legal in Commander? I and legacy. I did. It's a it's a bad idea. If you want to yep. make a card from unsets legal, make it be fetch lands, make it be I, shock lands, make it be basics. I didn't. Don't, hate you don't have to the, give us acorns. Well, I don't. That, I don't yeah. want that stuff, man. I, I I liked the idea when they originally announced because I played unstable, and I liked it a lot. Right, I thought the contraptions were a really fun mechanic to play with in limited, and I definitely understood if someone wanted to make a. If someone wanted to do this in Commander, we'd probably let them, right? It's not a big deal. People would play old Buzz Bark or whatever, right? And that was that could exist as a Yeah, for a card. laugh. But when it's just like, no, no I just have a strictly better Explorer's map now or Expedition right. map. Well, that was that was the thing. Is it, you know, it kind of is, I liked the idea conceptually of we're going to make the, the really weird ones acorns and the rest are going to be legal in Commander. Because that makes sense, right? That Why are you even making that set if people can't play it in your most popular format, right? But... <laughs> In reality, now we a lot of things that might be might should have been acorns are not. I'll say that. Um, I have friends being like, "Hey, do I have to start bringing in an attraction deck now in case my opponent plays attractions and then I steal their creature or someone gives me their creature with any as or whatever and I don't have an attraction deck?" These are not questions we should have to ask. I'll say that. Mark Rosewater posted something and I can't find it again. I just like saw a screenshot on Reddit or something. Uh-huh. Um, Let's see if I, I really wish anything. I could find it because I'm looking to. Just like what? What did he say though? He basically somebody basically asked like why about like this lack of silver border. Like why why do these cards not have silver borders? And it was okay. And his explanation was basically like, oh, when we focus grouped it, people were like telling us that they were upset that they their friends were telling us their friends were telling them they couldn't play the card because they're not real. Like, a card with a silver border isn't a real yeah. card. And so they basically, like... I don't want to use the word tricked, but, like, they were trying to, like, make people view them as real cards until they saw the acorn. Uh-huh. Which is just, like, just does not feel good for me. Yeah, I, I guess you're saying they might... I guess it's, it's like, you. they might think it's legal until they see the acorn? Is that your... The... The yeah, the yeah, issue. it's like, oh, the, these are all real cards, like yeah. Saw in Half and whatever the yeah. other ones are, and then like, oh, the, these ones that make me do a headstand are also real cards that are like might be legal and like, oh, wait, no, it's got a tiny acorn at the bottom, I see, you know? And so, like, it just felt a little deceptive of, like, Mark, because the unsets have always been Mark Rosewater's just, like, pet project, his baby project. Right. And just mm-hmm. this thing that he's always pushed really, really hard to get and obviously Unstable was really, really well received because he worked on it for 15 or 20 years before he could push it through or whatever. And mm-hmm. then, like, I don't know, it just feels like this is, to some degree, for like him trying to force something into the game that doesn't really need to be there. Uh, well, this is going to be... I, I, I'm interested to see how it plays. I have people in my play group are interested in playing with sticker cards. They're interested in playing with attraction stuff. A couple of people are like, oh, I want to try the deck. And it's like, I say go for it. Now, if I ever end up needing an attraction deck and you're the one playing attractions, I will play your attraction. That's our house rule for it. If in any, I'm not bringing an attraction deck in case the NES player gives me an attraction card, I will be using yours. Don't even know what attractions do. 
don't I don't know what half this stuff means, but um, that's my take on it. It's just house rule that stuff to make it work because people are going to want to play those cards in Commander, and at the end of the day, you might just have to rule zero some of them anyway. It's still, I guess, better than a silver border conversation. Like silver border conversations were just the worst. I really, I I didn't mind it. I hated it because. I mean, look, part of my experience is somebody who had, like, a silver border commander, and they'd always ask if they could play it, and then their commander did something broken. And it's like, okay, I guess. You know, it's just, it just kind of felt bad, where you're like, sure, you can play your cards, but then their cards are broken and shouldn't be played. That's why they're silver bordered. It just, it just, it just, it's like, it was just always a thing where a lot of them were fine, but a lot of them weren't. And it was just always a problem. It always made sense to just have them not be legal. So we'll see how this acorn thing plays out, I guess. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I also think it will be a thing where people move on to the next set in three months and no one remembers these and occasionally run into somebody in the wild with uh, an interaction commander deck and that's it, right? What about Warhammer? These cards are very pushed. Um, they're very popular, it seems. Not um, as popular as saying, oh, they're not pushed, actually. <laughs> In response to me on Twitter, like it's not just gonna get you blocked. That's well, to be fair, that's a low, low, low bar. Yeah, they're like... getting blocked by the by the alt on Twitter. Well, you know, maybe they shouldn't have said something that made me block him. You ever think about that? And I, I look, I'm not blocked by Jason. I clearly have never said anything that would bother you. So I'm, if you want, basically, what I'm saying is, if you don't want to get blocked by Jason on Twitter, behave like me on Twitter. Argue with random eggs and saffron's mentions. Winning strategy, I promise. You won't hate yourself and lose followers. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I don't. I, I haven't. I don't think I'll be getting any of the Warhammer stuff. Um, the cards did seem pushed, but I'm also of the opinion that everything's pushed in 2022. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at. Th we talked about this last week, but it's yeah. it's at the point where like you only have 99 cards still, and that's always going to be a limiter to what you can do. And we haven't like yeah. reached that point where everything's yeah. just killing everybody turn two and then when it reaches that point then people have the social like it's, it's always been an arms race right yeah a every well, commander game has always been an arms race for the most part and it's it just self-regulates and it, then it becomes fine like we, we've had the ability to demonic consultation each other for a long time and people do people reach it. that point and then they they decide to dial it back yep I'm a it's, little tired of expropriate myself. Yeah, and I think one games. of the best things about these pre-cons is that they, they're very good out of the box. They are very, very, like, competitive to the point where they can just... You can, like, buy a pre-con, and you, you might not have to be like, oh, I have a deck to play against real people, and then I have a kitty table deck for pre-con yeah. kids. Like, you can just... Yeah. You can pick up that deck off the shelf and play against somebody who has a, a seven, for lack of a better term, and, like, and, <laughs> like you, have a, you have a good interactive game. Well, everyone has a seven, so that's um. That's the yeah, then. yeah. You're set. Um, all right. Before we move on to pick of the week, here's a card none of us are picking this week. It's a card we've talked about in the past. It's a card that you might be aware that exists. You may not be aware of its price tag. DJ, how many dollars would it cost someone to pick up a Meat Hook Massacre? Uh, probably seventy on the low end. Um, if Jeez. we're going by MTG stocks. Seventy dollars for a standard card. What is this thing? You can get like LP ones for sixty five on a good day, but uh, it's a, it's Meat Hook wow. Massacre. It's only is, going up too. I bought some for twenty, and I was like, I can't believe I paid twenty dollars. This is a black, black, and X enchantment for everybody out there who has not paid attention to every single product release in the past sixty four months. <laughs> yeah, uh, legendary. Enters the battlefield, each creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain a life. Uh, this combines with Graveyard Trespasser, Liliana of the Veil, and Shields of the Apocalypse to form a really mean mono-black standard deck. And I think the last time we had something of this price tag in a standard format that was playing seeing this much play was maybe Jace Fritz Prodigy. There might have been something else since then that I can't think of. Um, that was Origins. Shouldn't there have been like Oko. a... Uh... Oko, DJ. What, did what Oko hit 70? I, I, I'm not talking price-wise. I'm talking, listen, I'm talking play-wise. Like there was a um, Pro Tour where Oko right at the beginning and it did actually peak out, it looks like, above 60 
50 to 60 on Oko so, uh, when it was uh, brand new. So it would have been on the way there if it had not been banned very quickly, I think. Sure. Uh, yeah, and I, I've seen a couple people talk about, like, this is the first time we've had a standard card hit $70 in a while. And I do want to address a couple things about that. The first is that the Meat Hook Massacre is not $70 because it's a standard card. Th- this yeah. card is is not $70 good. Uh, Jace the Architect of Thought, I think, was that that card had that. You mean Brent's Br- Br- Prodigy, right? Or, no, yeah, yeah, Jace, yeah, Jace from Prodigy, yes. Uh, Architect of Thought is a bulk mythic. But, uh, uh, Architect of Thought was good. It was but, good um, for a not, uh, not quite the same. Yeah. But, uh, so this card is good because nobody opened Midnight Hunt. And it, that is basically the only reason. Yeah, uh, it was still in the pandemic, right? We were in, oh, that was like peak. I'm trying to remember, it was either Delta or Omicron Wave, but that was definitely a don't go out sort of time. Well, it was about a year ago. It was like close to a year ago. We were getting Innistrad Midnight Hunt this fall, uh, this time the year, and then Crimson Vow was during the winter, January time. Uh, And so nobody opened Midnight Hunt at all. Just And Crimson Vow too. And one of the other things you can see about this is, uh, so there's a couple mono-white cards that have been seeing more and more play they are from this standard format, uh, Luminarch Aspirant and mm-hmm. uh, Hopeful, what's the what's the other one? Hopeful Recruit or something like that from Crimson Vow, the Enlist guy. Not Enlist, but uh, he like removes counters to kill the enchantments and artifacts. The point is, he's a, basically a, a one drop in Bono White, uh, and he recently spiked to like $6. Yeah, Mono White Humans is a very good deck in Pioneer. Um, so anything that goes into that deck, Luminarch is... Aspirin is a good one. Um, Adeline, I don't, I, I don't know if you mentioned that one or not. No, I didn't. But uh, yeah, that's so also th- a part of that. Deck. Yeah, these Adeline cards are... is also like pretty unfair if you've ever played against it. It, it feels, <laughs> I don't know, it feels like it's going to get out of hand immediately. Yeah, and both of these cards have a very, very big supply crunch, and that's something that some players who are new to the game might not have experienced. If you're somebody like who just played Arena, and then you're coming over to Paper Pioneer yeah. or Standard, and you're like wait, this, this card just got printed recently and it's it's still this much and Meat Hook Massacre, shouldn't that be dropping because people are yeah. opening packs still and it's still legal? Nobody's opening packs of this set at all. And so yeah. all of the expected value of those products that stores are opening is just in that one card. It's it, That entire box, that entire product just becomes a lottery ticket for the Meat Hook Massacre and its extended art variants and all that stuff. That's a lot of it. That is certainly a lot of it. And so, like, if you're looking to pick one up for Commander, if you're looking to pick up something like that, you can absolutely wait. It, it's basically entirely just supply, but it is still, some of that is based on the fact that people are buying these to play in paper events, like Pioneer and Standard. And I'm not saying that it's going to be a bulk mythic anytime soon. I'm not saying that it, it's going to crash. I'm not saying it's going to see, like, a list printing. Uh, but if you... Yeah, I think it's a very easy way to save like maybe thirty or forty dollars just by waiting close to a year for that card to settle back down. I, mm-hmm. I don't think that uh I don't think that buy don't buy the seventy dollar card is sage advice. I think that's pretty common sense, but I did just want to elaborate <laughs> as to why the card is is that uh at that number right now. And it's it's certainly not because of uh how much standard play it sees compared to its brethren yeah. in the format. Yeah, I, I mean, for as far as standard play goes, it is hard to. It's if so you look weird, at standard, right? Yeah, if you look at if you look at paper prices, the cards that are good in standard are worth more than the cards that are not, um, in a way that is not entirely explained only by other formats. So I don't know who out there is buying the cards, but I haven't seen a paper standard tournament fire in a long time before the pandemic, much less after. Um, but it's at very least a, a good way to see what cards, I guess, are going to be making the um, making the, the headlines in some ways because I, I we've seen some of them do well. Wedding announcements, the other one with like it's just a very like yeah. good card that nobody owns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one also goes into that human stack. Um, Speaking of MTG follow... stocks, Peter does a really nice job of. When cards spike like wedding announcement did, that everyone just sort of realized, oh, there's no copies of this. Um, they do a, a, a good job of releasing a weekly digest of kind of the the big movers of the week. It's mm-hmm. a well written thing. Um, I wish I'd thought of it. That's another oh. reason to go to mtgstocks.com. And you know what those are? 
th those write-ups are free, baby. We free. pitch the premium all the time. We pitch that that money spending, that spend money to make money. This is a spend zero to learn why you didn't make money, Tim, <laughs> and learn how to make money next time. So those, those weekly winner, uh, he's been doing those for like close to ten years. It's 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 been a while, uh, and he's. He does a good job of covering, like, if you're just a commander player, if you're just a pioneer player, if you're yeah. just just a Dan Dan player, you can find out <laughs> why things jumped. Well, and, and, and listen, the important thing is that those articles do a great job of not upsetting the internet because looking back at cards getting expensive that you wish you had bought, perfectly great. Telling people what cards they should buy before they get expensive, evil MTG finance taboo. speculation. Yep, love Strict it. taboo. <laughs> well, you, it, it is taboo, so... Warning at home, you may want may, may not want to listen to my pick of the week right now. Pick of the week, pick of the week, pick of the week. Time for the pick of the week. If you're uh, worried about being that, uh, but if you're not, if you just want to know what cards are moving up and you should be keeping an eye on, Artificer Class from Commander Legends, Battle for Baldur's Gate, has climbed up from about 350 uh, to about 425. Looks like it's probably going to keep going. The class spells are, are all, I think, pretty solid. Um, this one's also pretty cool. It allows you to pull artifacts out of your deck. It allows you to discount them, um, and you can then make tokens of them. All the class cards are just good, uh, and this has been climbing up. So I'm looking at Artificer class from I mean, Artificer. Commander Lens. Artificer class. Artificer Jason, what are you looking at this space, week? Baby. Looking at the fact that there is one card in particular from New Capenna that is in the top 100 most played EDH rec cards of the last week and the last month. Can you guess which New Capenna card is played the most in nearly 15,000 decks already? Bootlickers, bootlegger stash. I will tell you it is in 16% of all eligible Esper decks. Probably not bootlegger stash then, huh? Because that's not a good card. I know. And that's why I said it. I remember the hype on that one, Is though. it Unlicensed Hearse? Is that just like a crossover? Void Rend. Oh, yeah. Makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah. That, that'll do it. Void that's Rend a cool is... Card. Uh, it's it's very good. It's, what it's I like about good. Void Rend is it's one of the few um, in 2022 Magic clean designs you're ever going to see. Three mana... Spell can't be clannered, destroy target non land permanent. That the few fact words that it's on a card is, is like my wet dream. It's the only drawback yeah. it needs. It doesn't need a drawback <laughs> beyond that it's a little bit tricky to cast. But in Esper, you need uncounterable removal like that for those control matchups, and they're beating you with their one thing and protecting you with counter magic. Well, it's very good in the I'm not a competitive play, but just in the, the sequence where people play like Teferi and then untap to protect with counter magic, or in other formats where they have free counter magic, the can't be countered clauses. Yep. Is, is just very important across everywhere. And it makes they basically sense took it. a colorless and take three damage off of a very playable card and mm -hmm. swapped it with a blue mana. They didn't make it yep. three colorless yep. away. Yeah, you know, it's not utter end. It's it's just, yeah, it's real, it's real good. And it's not real sexy. It's an unsexy yeah. card. Nobody was talking about how hot Void Rend was. It's two bucks right, right, right. now. Well, they left themselves room to power creep it when we go back to the streets of Streets of New Capenna by making it exile instead of destroy. They'll just make Perhaps. it cost a half mana of each. We'll be at that point. Yes, yes, that's probably true. My six-year-old found um, a dismember today and decided that it was his, and then asked me to explain Phyrexian mana. So that was a bit of work. <laughs> DJ, what are you uh, you going to finish things off this week? What is your pick of the week for the listeners to take home? My pick of the week is currently $10 in America, and it is $17 in Japan, or 2500 yen, which is $17, which is a crazy exchange rate, but that's besides the point. Um, hmm. Archivist of Ogma, is that how you pronounce it? Ogma? Ogma? I think so. Something like that. The the two two for two with Flash, whenever an opponent searches their library, you gain lemon life and draw a card. This is one of the many just little dollops of uh, powerful white cars that they've sprinkled into sets over the past few years. Just one of those uh, very, I guess, uh, universally splashable catch-up cards that you 
everybody else ramps, everybody searches, everybody draws cards, everybody, the Swothering Tithe, kind of like, if they're doing it, I'll do it too. Um, yep. Well, this is a great one too, because it's whenever they search, you draw a card and gain a life as flash, but it's a lot better for the gameplay than um, Hole Breacher or those cards that straight up steal your draw steps or your searches or whatever, right? Compare Archimist of Ogma to um, Opposition Agent. I think they're both fine. Um, I, I agree they're both fine. Um, but I I don't think anyone gets mad when you play an Archivist of Ogma. People rage about Opposition Agent. Because they were going to do something broken and you get to do it instead. Like Exactly. Yep. <laughs> uh, but cards with discrepancies between the US and Japan tend to uh, mean that those cards get filtered out of the US and get sent to Japan and it's hard for them to find their way back here. So supply tends to drain on these cards uh, much quicker. And uh, uh, one of the best examples of this is uh, Fierce Guardianship, which is just one of those commander-only pre-con cards. It's it's the the force of will, just a free counter spell if you have your commander in play. Um, and people think that commander doesn't see... Commander's not a format in Japan, and it is. Uh, commander is a format in Japan, but it is played differently. It's not as much of a a four-player beer game where everybody just sort of plays Dirtles until turn 10 then cast their crater offs. It's it's yeah. still a four-player game sometimes, but it is it is more cutthroat and efficient. Uh, you, you're not playing, like, necessarily CEDH of just 1v1s, but it is, it is a different environment where, like, powerful more streamlined cards see more play and uh and this is definitely one of the mo one of the more streamlined and powerful cards that can like stop your opponent from doing their powerful streamlined thing yeah i think a lot of sort of what we think about fitting into commander is based on what is acceptable in our circles or even content creator circles or even the magic twitter sphere of sort of power level of cards and and in japan as you're saying it, it they might not have the, the 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 level of expectation from the game can be completely different yes uh because they're just not entering with those necessary those preconceived this is what we're here to do yeah cards like which is neat right th there's so many just more efficient cards that see play in commander and it's not even again it's not like a cedh where oh right. th we're playing commander or cedh it's just yeah. a different way to play the game that is almost like legacy in a way, but stretched out among four players. Yeah, I mean, I like my com commander games to be played competitively, if not necessarily deck built competitively. Um, so I don't, like I said, I've never played commander in Japan, but it seems like it would be an interesting experience. I like my EDH games like I like my women. On a table with three other people? Yeah, that tracks. That's a swing and a miss, my man. Right yeah, well, I mean, that's a swing, but I wouldn't call it a miss. <laughs> oh, I thought well, you were going to say thing no, that no wipes. One thing that never misses is the uh, t-shirt designs at Coalesce Apparel. Go to Coalesce Apparel right now. Perilous right Apparel. now. <laughs> I am sick. It is Coalesce Apparel. Go check it out. Go find the Brew Crew shirts. Go find the... Shivam t-shirts, go find the Caleb t-shirts. They got everything you want at Coalesce. You can use the gift code Brainstorm Brewery to uh, get a discount on your order. That helps support us. You get some awesome products and it helps support your favorite content creators. Even if you don't buy our shirts, if you use our gift code, we really appreciate it. Remember that the gift code the does shirts. not have a maximum limit. You can you can steal thousands and thousands of dollars from Cedric with this gift code. You just, I mean, it, it's gonna cost a little bit, but like you you can do bit. that. You can. You gotta you spend money to make money. Yeah, yeah. If you spend that much money, you save ten percent of that. That's that's an infinitely scaling discount. To be honest, that's bad. Look, are you gonna not wear shirts? You think you have right now every shirt you're going to wear for the rest of your life? No, of course no. not. So you don't want to pay full price for it later. And, like, you don't want to pay shipping on all those shirts from, yeah. like, what, Teespring? No, like, no. those those no. weird t-shirt ads you see on Facebook where, like, they they hire, like, just weird, like, Uncanny Valley actors to, like, <laughs> make it seem like they're enjoying their t-shirt or, the, like, where their partner shames them for having ill-fitting shirts. No, you're not, you're not going to buy those ones because they don't have, like, Nico Boas with, like, a Coke can on it. Like, absolutely not, no. 
Coalesce Apparel, everybody, go check it out. And go check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash BSB. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. Peace, Brainstorm Brewery. We'll see you next week.